I don't want to play anymore. You know, I, I don't want to play anymore. I'm, you know, I am, I am, I am upset. I am. I didn't prepare for this. I am unprepared to deal with this level of what appears to be failure. Throughout 2009, Kai Green was being hyped as one of the few possible successors to the Mr. Olympia crown. It was somehow expected that this relative newcomer to the most prestigious competition in bodybuilding would sweep the contest in a way that no previous champion ever had. Though his fourth place showing in 2009 was a disappointment, Kai made up for it with a hard-fought win of the 2010 Arnold Classic, edging out a very competitive and frustrated Phil Heath. Coming into the 2010 version of the Olympia, Kai was once again being predicted as one of the most likely to upset Jay Cutler's winning streak. Kai becoming a weeder athlete further reinforced in fans' minds that he was poised to take it all. However, during the prejudging callouts, all of that changed in an instant. This is documentary filmmaker Mike Pulsanella reporting for Muscle Meds. Oh my God, the first two call-outs have occurred and I was not in either one of them. It is over. This thing is over. Now you have a choice to make. You can fight it out, you know, detach yourself from your feelings, put them on the side, stand there and smile and do all those things that, you know, are expected of a champion to do. Um, but, you know, the gut, the raw emotion is, I don't want to play anymore. That's it. It's over. <laughs> Man, you wish the stage could open up and swallow. Um, when I saw him in the pre-judging, you know, when I saw him camp come out, it looked okay, but then I saw, as, I, as he began to pose, I didn't see his muscles pop as much, you know? And I remember posing with him in the gym, he looked bigger and harder. I'm like, what, what is going on? And then, okay, you know what, maybe it was the lighting, maybe. So when I saw the comparisons and I saw he wasn't as full and as dry and as hard as I seen him, I was like, wow, we just blew an opportunity, man. There's the embarrassment, there's the humiliation, there's the, the questions of, oh my God, what went wrong? There's the ahas that, went, that goes back to some of the things that were happening as they were happening, and you might want to question it, but you don't. There's the aha that, yeah, you didn't feel right about that, but, you know, when you didn't feel right about it, that aha, it was wrong, you know, but, you know, it's too late, you know, there's, you know, the despair of, Wait, you know, wait, this is, this is, this is, you know, this is the moment. This is, this is, this is everything that built up, you know, in my mind. Uh, this is not it. This was, this was it. Yeah. You know, this was it. And that is to me like, you know, losing a mother or a grandmother, or, you know, I feel like something died. You want to win, and you want to succeed, and you want to represent success, and you dream about more success, and now you want to cover the magazine, and <gasps> the Olympia comes and goes, it's a blur, and 
you didn't meet the successful standard that you prayed about, worked for, believed that you were working to what was coming to you because you were working so hard. You, you did everything. That you, you did your cardio. You ate the meals. You, 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 you put your body through pain that was just, that took nothing but passion and drive to, you know, still be trained when you were in pain, you trained when you weren't in pain through bloodshot eyes or not, whether you could walk or not. Not only did you not succeed at showing the world the success, but now you're on the cover of Flex Magazine, coming back to the projects coming back to the faces of people that are like, what happened? You think about facing anyone, facing tomorrow, facing myself, facing my coach, facing tomorrow, hey, I didn't know, you know. Kai, you are a champion. You are making Muscle Meds an amazing brand. And why? Because of what you are, because of what you have done with your body, and because you're such an amazing athlete. What happened here is like, nobody understands. Everybody's totally confused. <laughs> I, I, that's my opinion. Everybody was like, you shouldn't hear people behind me. I mean, what, what's going on? To the untrained eye, you can think, well, maybe this guy was cheating on his diet, you know, maybe this guy was not doing his cardio. I, I tell you right now, those things, you know, if anybody knows Kai, Kai is probably one of the most disciplined, hardest working bodybuilders. They say Branch Warren is hard and working. Kai, I, I put Kai against anybody in the IFBB uh, for hard working, committed, devoted. If this guy needs to eat sand and train and what he'll do whatever he has to to be the best. He's always had that even when he was younger, you know, he has that that discipline, that drive. You know, you take an athlete that's invested everything. You know, before I would before I would move out of the projects, I'd sooner invest another ten or fifteen or twenty grand in you know, all the things that are conducive to being prepared on that day as a champion athlete. You know, and when, when you've done those things and exceedingly beyond that, you know, and, you know, there's a moment where you, you know, you can, you can step away from the, the philosophical stuff that we've, you know, talked about in earlier videos and just feel like, yo, you know, um, I don't want to play anymore. What went wrong, I think it's this mild film of water the last few weeks of the show, the last few days, last week or so. Um, but as far as the actual preparation, the cardio, the training, the diet, everything leading up to the show, I think this is the best, one of the best preparations we've ever had. <sighs> squeeze, one, up, squeeze, two, excellent, three, come on, four, excellent. I've never seen him train heavier. I've never seen him train harder. Um, he always trains hard and heavy. It's not like we're saying we train harder for this show than for the last show. We train hard all the time. Come on. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Excellent. But this time, I guess he knew there was a real strong possibility that we were actually going to win. But when you have that in the, in the back of your mind, you, you're able to go 100%. And he, was, he had no hesitations. I remember two weeks before the show, he was doing six plates in the bench press, five plates in the incline. I mean, just stuff that I've never seen him do before. And, and it was thicker and harder and better. I was very convinced in my mind, in his mind, that we were going to do it. That's why you work hard behind the scenes. That's why you put everything in it to the point where if somebody's never done this before, if someone's never prepared for a situation like this, probably wouldn't understand, you know, all the things that you'd be willing to put at risk even, you know, to be prepared 
in that moment on that day. And if you do it, you know, you take risks and you, you make investments that are incredible. You know, someone else may look at and say, man, you know, if you do this and you're successful, then it's wow, you know, that guy, you're an amazing athlete. Oh, they can't say enough wonderful things, you know, but if you do it and, you know, the end result is what looks like failure then, or something less than the desired end result, then suddenly it's, wow, that guy was stupid, you know, why would he do something so dumb? The perfect pedigree! I couldn't sleep. Couldn't sleep for the last, I don't know, six weeks going into the show. But the night that we had the finals, I remember being backstage and finally falling asleep. It was, it was done, it was, it was over, it was... Man, I remember waking up and realizing this was not a dream, this is reality. It's funny because a lot of times people believe that they want to be able to see behind the armor you know, of the athlete when, when, when they're achieving the success and even after, like, you know, hey, hey, how do you feel about your placing? Uh, how do, you know, hey, so uh, what's next for you? What do you, you know, what's going on? And sometimes it would see, appear as if they're disappointed when you seem to be as well poised and cool and, you know, okay, you know, but the reality is, I realized, though, that there is no way that the athlete in that situation, you know, has the ability or the option to even express what they really feel in that moment. With the Olympia only six weeks in the past, and his body still feeling the after effects of his preparations for it, Kai is now trying to decide what his course of action will be. The Flex Pro Show is only 16 weeks away. The Arnold Classic, another two after that. Can he be ready in time? Next time, we will discuss Kai's plans for the coming season and take a sneak peek at a new opportunity for him. I think that bodybuilding is supposed to be a stepping stone. It's not supposed to be all. To get instant updates on all my video projects, subscribe to the Gato MJP YouTube page or become a Mike Polsonella Facebook friend.